Fire in the hole, let's make a barbecue shrimp po' boy before it rains anymore. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, barbecue shrimp is kind of a misnomer because uh, you don't really barbecue the shrimp. What you do is you cook it in a skillet with some uh, herbs and uh, spices. That's a little bit of olive oil right there, a little extra virgin olive oil in my hot frying pan. And I got about a pound and a half of uh, medium shrimp. I'm going to throw them in there. Let them fry. We don't want to cook them through. We just want to get them a little bit uh, cooked up a little bit. And we're going to put some uh, Paul Perdome. Uh, can you see that? Uh, Paul Perdome seafood magic on there. About a tablespoon of that. And we're not going to uh, cook these shrimp all the way through. We're just going to sear them a little bit on the grill and get some of that, uh, that seafood magic spread out on them. Get a little bit of a cook on them, not much. We don't want to cook them all the way through because we want them to cook in the sauce that we're going to make. As soon as we get done with this, a little bit. Cook them up a little bit, get them a little pink right there, get that uh, seafood magic spread out on them. I'm going to take them back out of the pan and uh, put them in a bowl, and then we're going to make our sauce. So let's get them back out of there, put them in a clean bowl. It's looking good already. Uh oh, I lost one. Get him back. I don't want to lose a single strip. I got this recipe from. Uh, Serenia Jones, who is Russ Jones's wife. I hope I'm saying your name right, Serenia. I'm really not sure how to pronounce it. She posted it on Facebook, and uh, I went and checked it out on the web, and man, it looked good. Okay, so we got our, our shrimp are, uh, a little bit cooked up, and we got to go get uh, the rest of the ingredients and finish cooking this. So uh, stay tuned. I'll bring you right back and show you what that's all about. Okay, so we got the shrimp out of there. Now into our pan we're going to throw some garlic. And I got about six cloves of garlic minced up. I'm going to cook that up a little bit. And there in the pan with the pan drippings. I'm going to take a little bit of lemon juice and kind of deglaze that pan a little bit with that lemon juice. Get that off there. Then we've got some rosemary that I got out of my garden. Fresh rosemary. And I got some fresh thyme that I bought at the store. I'm going to throw that all in there. And then we're going to uh, deglaze our pan even further with some beer. And I got a very special beer that my cousin Lee got me. This is, uh, uh oh, <laughs> this is Hardywood Hoplar. And she gets it from a, a brewery near where she lives in Virginia. We're just going to pour about just a little bit of that beer in there. Mix that up. The recipe calls for eight tablespoons of beer, but I think I'm going to go with a little bit more beer than that. Cause man, that smells excellent right now. And I think I'm going to move my frying pan a little bit. Hope you can still see it. Are we still on camera? Oh man, that smells great. To that, we're going to add some uh, Worcestershire sauce. It calls for a dash of Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to put quite a bit of Worcestershire sauce in there because I like it. It tastes good. Put that in there. And then we're going to put some uh, frog bone Cajun pepper sauce in there as much as we like and we like a lot. Some frog bone Cajun pepper sauce to our sauce that we're making for the shrimp. And then the coup de gras, a whole stick of butter. Calls for a quarter pound of butter. And drop that in there. Get that all melty. Okay. Yeah, looking good, huh? Melt up that butter. The garlic, the beer, the hot sauce, the Worcestershire sauce. We've got fresh thyme, fresh rosemary, and butter. Can't beat the butter. 
got a nice sauce going there. Beautiful sauce. Look at that. Can you see that? I hope so. Oh man, that's amazing. That's looking excellent. Gonna melt that butter up. Probably have to move this pan off the fire. But that's okay. Let's melt that butter up first. What's better than watching butter melt? Can you think of anything? Maybe watch me drink a beer, right? Well, don't worry. I'm gonna drink this beer. This hoplar. It's got uh, hops and alder. I guess the alder wood is it, it's uh, aged in alder wood. Yeah, we gotta move that off the fire a little bit. It's getting a little too hot. And we got our our herbs and garlic all cooked up in there. And that looks good in that uh, whole stick of butter and the uh, Paul Perdome's magic spices. And now we're going to put our shrimp back in there. Back in that sauce. Cook that up. I keep dropping them. Get them off the grill there. Okay, we got to move that pan some more. So I don't want it to uh, bubble up too much. All I want to do now is just coat those shrimp with that sauce real good. Ah, uh, looking good, looking good. Let me uh, move that pan off that real hot fire. It's almost done, believe it or not. It doesn't take long to cook shrimp, I'll tell you. We just want to get that sauce all over that shrimp. How's that look? Pretty damn good, huh? So, what we got left to do is toast the bread and put that on the bread and we're done. We're done with our uh, po' boy. Keep losing the shrimp, boy, I'll tell you what. That one got away clean. Let me get that away from that fire a little bit. There you go. Yeah, we don't really need to cook that much more than that. So, uh, how's that look? Can you see that? Yeah, if I didn't kick the... The, uh, what do you call it? Tripod, you'd be able to see it. That looks pretty good, huh? How's that shrimp look? Ah, oh, beautiful. It's got those herbs are all over it, and that Worcestershire sauce, and that frog bone hot sauce. Okay, so all we got to do now is uh, go get our bread and toast it up a little bit and put it on the bread, and we're done. And we'll drink a beer and come back. That'll be the end of the video, so stay tuned. Okay, so I got some nice, crusty French bread that I'm going to just throw on the hot fire. Toast it up a little bit. Ooh, that's hot. That ain't gonna take long, I'll tell you. Then we'll put it on our plate and plate this up with the shrimp and the uh, that sauce that that shrimp is in is just amazing. That's not real. Uh oh, catch on fire. Oh, that's hot. Okay, that's enough toasting right there. Okay. So uh, let me let me redirect your attention over here to the plate. There we go. Now we're gonna take and uh, spoon our shrimp mixture right into that French bread. Looks like I'm going to have a lot of shrimp mixture <laughs> left over, but that's okay. That's okay. You could eat that over rice. That would be great. In fact, that's probably what we're going to do. But I'm going to make my sandwich first. If my, my bread won't stay in the on the plate because it's not got a flat bottom on it. There goes another shrimp. Damn it. I gotta chill out with this. This is, uh, I'm losing shrimp left and right. Okay. Yeah, we'll put the rest of this, we'll just slap it on some rice. And how's that look? That beautiful garlicky uh, beer sauce on there. Does that look pretty good? Does that look good enough to eat? Let's see. Maybe we'll take a picture of that. How's that look? Not bad if the flies would get away from it, huh? Let's zoom in on that take a picture of that. That looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? Okay, so uh, that's my po' boy. I'm going to take some of that shrimp and just uh, make some rice and put it over some rice. That's not the way you make barbecue shrimp, by the way. And if you want to see the real way to make barbecue shrimp, just go over uh, to Rusty Jones' channel. He made it uh, not too long ago. He made a real barbecue shrimp dish. Where am I going to put this? Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, let's drink this beer. This is, uh, there's the Frosty Root Boy mug. And this is Hoplar. 
Imperial IPA that my cousin Lee got me. Thanks, Lee. Among other things, she got me a whole bunch of other crap, too. Well, let's pour out some of that hoplar. And, oh, man, that looks good. Hoplar. Don't that sound good? It's like marklar. Look at the head on that. Beautiful. I almost spilled it. What do you think? Roll. Now, there's a head you can get behind, Roll. You can really quaff the froth off of that. So let's let it settle out a little bit, and I still got quite a bit left in this bottle. I'm going to have to figure out a way to save it, either that or just drink it all tonight. But there's the Root Boy mug. Let's take a taste of Hoplar. Let's take a sniff first. It smells really good. It smells hoppy. I really can't detect any uh, alder. Is it alder? Poplar. Poplar wood that they have in the... Uh, I don't know if they have poplar wood in the mix or they age it in poplar barrels. Let's take a taste of that. Roll. Check out the head on that, baby. Let's quaff it. <coughs> Whoa. That's got a high woof, ABV. 8.5 by volume. That's got quite a kick. It's got an excellent flavor, though. Lee, thank you very much for the beer. Terina Jones, thank you for the wonderful recipe. If you want to see how to really make New Orleans barbecue shrimp, go over and see uh, Rusty Jones. I'll put a link to his channel. And you notice I use frog bone hot sauce in this, so I'll put a link to frog bone sauces, and you can check them out. Anyway, that's the video for today. So, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Excuse me. Thank you very much. Quaff the froth off of one for yourself. Hardywood. And my cousin lives near this Hardywood brewery in Virginia. So uh, thanks again, Lee. All right, cheers, everybody. See you next week. Ah, that's some potent beer, folks. Thanks for watching.